I just had to realize for myself that those willfully ignorant people, those people who are openly racist or whatever, they can't take my peace, right? They can't take, nobody can take your peace unless you give it to them. I will always drive to you, yeah. I will always fly for you, yeah. I might even die for you, yeah. But I will always fly for you, yeah. Got me all in my mind tonight. I might be busy taking flight tonight. But you're still running on my mind tonight. Alright, let's do this. I've just been like lately let's let <laughs> lately it's been so long since i've done this i'm literally just all over the place it's been a minute since i was on instagram to begin with but today i've just been like really feeling heavy this question which is forgiveness towards white people just because i have a white boyfriend doesn't mean i stop like questioning supremacy white supremacy and racism and this morning i just was like really really dwelling on forgiveness towards racists and willfully ignorant white people like i'm talking you know you got your <laughs> you got your openly racist white people like there's two houses within less than a mile of my house that um have blackface statues on their lawn like what the fuck? this is redneck country basically and then you have you know the willfully ignorant that you know those white people that be getting locks which can we even really call them locks <laughs> but you know, those white people that be getting locks or those white girls that be getting braids and all that shit done. And then they get upset when black people come at them and saying, why are you wearing our hairstyles? Why are you trying so much to take black culture? Why? What more do you want from us, basically? This question has been really dwelling on me. Let me, let me, let me light my purple candle so, you know, we can be connected to <laughs> the divine. I even got my amethyst out here because, for real, y'all, this was really just, really really laying heavy on my mind for lack of a better it was really just heavy on my mind and i knew i wanted to speak about it so i'm just gonna do my hair and we're gonna talk about it Come in the back do we even have to forgive white people because i'm an activist that's not <laughs> that's nothing new that's nothing i try to hide but i'm also a very spiritual person and so for me for the longest it was just trying to figure out um how to bring those two parts of me together because for the longest i kept thinking that those were two separate sides of my identity which is it's not but i kept thinking like oh well you know i'm an activist on one hand i'm a spiritual person on the other hand so like i just don't know what i'm gonna do i don't know how you know if i should forgive white people or not and as the question continued to lay on my mind and you know i would stop thinking about it but it would still be in the back of my mind i just this morning as i was washing my hair i i oh lord a lot of water on me i came to the realization that yes you know i may i'm an activist and i'm a spiritual person there is no divide and truthfully it's one thing to be super spiritual when you're by yourself and you're meditating and you're reading your books you know and there's no challenges in front of you. It's really easy to be spiritual when you're by yourself and you don't have any challenges. But then it starts getting real, real hard, right? When you start going back into the real world. You start going back into, like, the time-driven world and you see all these people doing shit that annoys you. <laughs> and you... It's, it's just a lot more difficult. And it doesn't necessarily need to be, like, racist people. Although, as a person of color, that is usually what triggers my anger. But, um... It could just be as simple as just a relationship or whatever, you know? Because people are unpredictable. And not everybody is on a spiritual path. Not everyone is on a spiritual path. And so, when you start to actually see people who aren't on their spiritual path, and they just annoy the out of you and you're sitting there like oh oh i'm about to, i'm about to go off i'm about to go off on this i'm about to go off that to me is the real challenge that is the real challenge people are your challenge throughout just time there has been so many things that have divided us so many things and i'm really glad that people are they're they're trying to wake up now 
in the sense of both being woke, like in the political sense, but also having like their spiritual eye, their third eye um, awakening. But to me, I feel like spiritual awakening without um, doing racial wound healing is only setting us back, right? Because then you have your white people that just be you know, they, 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 they get their locks, right? They get their locks, they start wearing a bindi on their forehead, they start doing meditation, they start wearing flowy clothes, they go to India, they, you know, and then all of a sudden they're spiritual, right? They get their crystals and then they know everything, apparently. And yet they don't understand the, the consequences of their actions. Cue me and other black and brown spiritual people, right? Or just activists, because everyone's in their own, their own, um, their own spiritual path. And I just had to realize for myself that those willfully ignorant people, those people who are openly racist or whatever, they can't take my peace, right? They can't take, nobody can take your peace unless you give it to them. And so, oftentimes, we're just projecting stuff on other people. We get mad at them because, oh, you know, they don't even know what they're doing. They just, they're choosing not to understand what their, you know, how their actions affect us. They don't understand that they be getting locks. And yet, on the other hand, you know, it's it's legal for an employer to discriminate against me because I have locks. But then all those other white people be having locks and they're fine. They don't see the divide. And for a long time, that was a source of anger within me because... I was just like, how can white people not understand? Like, you know what I mean? Why are they purposefully, like I said, being willfully ignorant? And I just had to take a step back because spirit, right? Spirit. Ooh, I almost dropped my candle. Spirit. Those things tell me to always be compassionate to myself and compassionate to other people. And yet there was a divide within me because, you know, my the spirit was saying, you know, you have to love everybody. And even when people are ignorant, even when people don't want to see their actions, even when they don't want to be, you know, um, they don't want to be marching with us. They don't want to be protesting with us. I still have to have love for them because we are all a part of this world. And yet on the other hand, it was the activist side that was getting so full of anger and bitterness. And to me, I had to learn the divide between bitterness and anger. Because anger can be used. Anger can be used as fuel. Because it's very obvious, even though there is an awakening within the world right now, and there's lots of people trying to be spiritual, there's still a lot of shit that needs to get taken care of, right? I'm talking our president. I'm talking colorism, right? I grew up seeing all of this anti-black solidarity as a Dominican woman, seeing Dominicans being like, oh, I'm not black. I'm I'm a Dominican. I'm Hispanic. And I'm sitting there like, do you do you see your skin tone right now, baby? Do you see your skin tone? Like we're all on this Haiti and Dominican Republic are a part of one island. We share the same history. And yet this anti-black solidarity idea has been put into our heads to divide us, as has many things, like religion. The whole idea of like, well, my religion is right and yours is wrong, and da 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 da. That's also things that have been used to divide us. Because spirit would never, spirit would never want us to be divided over stupid shit like that. Spirit would want us to be united even if we praise different gods and goddesses. Even if we go about our prayers differently. It's all just uniqueness. You know, it's all just unique to wherever we came from. It's not something that should be dividing us. And yet, the ego steps in and divides us. And I'll be honest, my ego was stepping in. My ego was stepping in because I did not want to forgive white people. And I still be having days where I'm just sitting there like, white people are actually the enemy. Like, they really suck. And, the, like, I still have days like that. You know what I mean? Just because I'm on the spiritual path doesn't mean I'm always 100% being peaceful. If anything, my spiritual path has been, my path to enlightenment and self-realization has been a lot of me just recognizing my own, my own um, toxic habits, my own shit that I need to deal with. As I was in this morning, I was in the shower this morning, the downloads that were coming into me this morning were just that nobody can ever take my peace. Nobody. 
Not Becky with her locks. <laughs> no, they can't. They can't. And I, there's so many things in this world that are trying to divide us. So many things that people use to inspire anger and fear within ourselves. And, um... I just got so caught up in my own thoughts. I'm really trying to let me gather myself. Because I was having some beautiful, beautiful downloads this morning. But, yeah, no. Spirit tells me that nobody can ever take my peace. Nobody. And I think about, like I said, my boyfriend's white. And I think about how when we first started dating... There was so many things that he had no clue about. He grew up in a white neighborhood with white people. And um, he didn't know anything about diversity. He didn't know anything about sexism and racism. Like, he knew kind of like bare, bare bones. Because, you know, the schools don't be teaching you that. And if he doesn't have any, any person of color in his life, how the fuck is he going to learn that? You know what I mean? I, like many other women and men, you know, grew up on Tumblr, so we became very, we, we learned about these issues from a very, very young age. I learned about feminism, not from my own school, not from my parents, not from my friends. I grew up learning about feminism on the internet, which is fine. You know, definitely there was some issues because... You know, there is no one feminist thought. There is many types of feminism. And even within the feminist movement, there is white people who don't give a fuck about people of color or trans people or any other minority group within feminism. But he grew so much in the, like, two-some years we've been together. And I think about that. And, I, and you know, a lot of white people are the way they are because no one's ever taught them differently they've been surrounded by anger and hatred and racism that that's all they know and then they want to protect it they want to protect it because all of a sudden everything they grew up with is changing all around them all these thoughts that they had you know when they thought they were the best or even if it wasn't it doesn't racists aren't always like oh, white people are the best sometimes it's a lot more it's a lot more nuanced than that and they don't realize what their actions are. But anyway, he has grown up so much because I took the time to explain it to him. And again, there's that divide of, you know, do I want to be a Malcolm X or do I want to be MLK? Do I want to be peaceful? Although, let's be real, towards the end, he was getting a little bit more, um, <laughs> he was being a little bit more radical towards the end. But, you know, what's this idea of do I want to be peaceful? Do I want to not be? And that's still something I'm trying to decide for myself because there is still very much so a need for optimism, you know? And I know in my heart of hearts, I know because Source has told me, I know because Spirit has told me, whatever you want to call it, I know that we need unity. Because let's be real, y'all. We can't eliminate racism without white people. We just, we just can't. The only way you would do that is if you, like, eliminate all white people. Right, you eliminate all white people, but then you still have colorism. So then let's just delete all, the, you know, it never, it doesn't end. It doesn't end without education. And of course, not all white people want to learn. But what are we doing by, you know, getting up in the, their people people's faces and um, bringing more division and more hatred into this world when there's already so many things that are trying to divide us? Outside of racism, there's like 10 people in this whole world who own all of the wealth. And they profit off of us fighting with each other because when we fight with each other, we don't fight against them. We don't fight against them for having, for not giving us living wages. We don't fight against them for polluting the earth. You know, they get a $25 million fine, they pay it, they go back to polluting the water. They don't give And they profit off of us getting these stupid ideas that make us that make us think we're different and that makes some of us feel like we're better than the other and it's really just ego running rampant it really is i'm not saying that it is our job to be educated every white person it's 2019 they can go on google 
But hostility is not going to get us anywhere either. And so for me, it's really that that kind of that the integration of my spiritual side and my activist side and it's coming together into this beautiful union and it's not this divide it's not just you know on the one hand I'm an activist on the other hand I'm a spiritual person it's all just me there is no divide and I don't have all the the answers but I do know that I have seen what happens when a white person listens there is responsibility that needs to be held on both sides because it's not my job to teach you everything like i said it's 2019 pick up a book go to google watch a documentary go on youtube there's many many sources that can explain what i have been spewing out for the past 20 some years but at the same time i have to have generosity and kindness and compassion in my heart that if a white person wants to learn they can come to me they can listen to me and I can tell them what I know and I can tell them that, you know, I'm not the end all be all. I'm just one brown person and other people might feel differently. But berating them, berating white people on Twitter isn't really doing much either. It's this really, really intricate balance. It's like walking on a tightrope in the middle of Times Square and you're like 400 feet up. It's okay to have made mistakes. It really is because we're all human as long as we want to learn from them and grow and be better. And again, that's not to say that there aren't white people that just don't give up. They really just don't. And that's okay because my peace is not disturbed. My warrior spirit is not disturbed. I keep going on because I know people are joining me because I know, I know that people are listening and I know that people are changing and they're trying to get better but there has to be a space for that because otherwise nothing changes if nothing changes and again like I said there's responsibility on both parties nobody can take your peace and spirit says that we should be more united because there is only one earth there is only one earth one place and like it or not, we are all here together. And we all have a responsibility to be kind to ourselves, kind to others, kind to wildlife, and kind to nature as well. I just sit in the middle of this spectrum of, you know, all unity, let's all be together. <laughs> and then on the other side, it's white people, racists. <laughs> I sit very, very much so in the middle of that spectrum. And all I can do is to try to be as compassionate and loving as I can today and every day that I have on this earth because one day it will inevitably be my last. And I'd rather bring more compassion, more love, more light, more unity into this world because I can't take all of the evilness out, right? Without evil, there is no good. And the time we live in right now is a time of duality. Where there is no, you know, you have to have both or you have nothing. I just charge all of us to find the answers within ourselves. Because it's one thing to say, oh, I'm going to be compassionate in every, in every, every day. And then it's another to be confronted with a very, very difficult issue. There are children being kept in concentration camps. Let's call it what it is. Let's not call them detainment camps because that's a real fancy word that somebody used to hide the fact that this is another holocaust. Let's be real. It's a concentration camp. There are people who think that seeking asylum is wrong and illegal and it's not just white people there are plenty of black and brown and asian people that be saying the same it's just the white people say it a little louder there is so much poverty within the world the icebergs are melting <laughs> the rivers are drying the animals are dying and i think about this one quote that i said that says um when love is present she is there and the rivers flow beautifully but when love is lost, the rivers dry up, the animals die. 
there is no more lushness. There is no more beauty because love is gone. And I see a lot of egos running rampant. Again, it might just be a projection of myself because on the one hand, yes, people are crazy, but also I have had my own fair share of crazy moments and I haven't, it took me a while to get to this point and I'm still growing, I'm still learning. But there is a need, there is a need to fight. And there is a need to love and there is a need to be compassionate and there is a need to join together, to fight everything that is trying to take away love from this world and again i don't have all the answers i don't i'm just a 21 year old here <laughs> but i know that love finds a way i know that because spirit told me that so i just want to know how how do y'all feel how do you guys feel about you know activism and spirituality because again like i said this has been a, a question that's been on my mind for the past probably month or two and i'm sure as time goes on my answer will change and develop more again this was these are all just thoughts i was having in the bathroom and i just wanted to come out here and do my hair and put on some some aloe vera on my face and just talk because i felt the need to be connected to y'all i felt connected to spirit and I felt connected to Source today because I was one with love. I was one with creation because those are my natural states. You know, love is my natural state. Love is my natural frequency. Abundance, joy, peace. Those are all my natural frequency. That's what I always vibrate at, you know? And there might be things that might be blocking my frequency, but that's always my main state. And because I felt so connected to love and source and spirit, I wanted to feel connected to you guys. Because, like I said, I'm just one brown person in this be big, beautiful world. And there's many, many beautiful, beautiful brown and black people and Asian people, white people. And we all can have different opinions. That's nothing. That's nothing bad. And um, I just want to know. I just want to know how y'all feel. Because... It might help me further develop myself or whether it's because I agree with you or whether it's because I'm like, oh, yeah, no, I don't I don't agree with what you're saying at all. It doesn't matter because we can all learn from each other. Um, so I just want to know how y'all feel. <laughs> I'm a little nasally. I'm a little bit sick, but um, I just want to know the way I feel is. There has to be compassion. That is not to say we need to be compassionate towards people who have uh, deeply hurt us or abused us or uh, like we, it is okay to have boundaries. And I'm not saying that it is our job as black and brown women and men to be educating all white people and to try to change all white people. It's not our job to be doing that for anybody, whether it's a spiritual path or, um, you know, whether if it's them trying to be an activist, they can come to us if they want to learn. But we have to be open and receptive to it. Again, that's just how I feel. So I want to know, how do y'all feel on this glorious Saturday morning? Let me know how y'all feel. You know, I'll, I, I'm down for anything. Even if I don't agree with you, I want to know what y'all feel, feeling like. Because I'm sure there's going to be some people that are like, no, fuck white people. Fuck them. They, You see what they have done? They have enslaved us. They have, you know, they did Jim Crow. They've done redlining. They're putting kids in fucking camps, you know. And then there's going to be other people <laughs> that are going to be like, well, white people with locks, that's okay because everything is for everyone. And, <laughs> you know, there's going to be people from both sides. And I just, I want to hear it all. I want to hear it all. So let me know. Let me know what y'all think. And I'll be here and receptive to it because I am love and you are love and we can all learn from each other. So, yeah. <laughs>